Joining us now for more on Mexico's minimum wage debate is Christopher Wilson. He's a senior associate with the Wilson Center. Christopher, great to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us this evening. Thanks a lot for having me. Christopher, we just saw in Frank's report that over the past several decades, Mexico's minimum wage has actually fallen by over 40% when you take inflation into account. It currently averages about 66 pesos a day. Why is Mexico's minimum wage so low? What are the economic and political factors at play here? Well, I think Mexico is a big manufacturing country. It has really depended on, in part, low wages to, to attract companies to invest in Mexico, uh, which, which has produced a lot of good results for the economy. Nonetheless, because the minimum wage has been increased so slowly over time, it just hasn't kept up with inflation. And uh, it's really time to change that. And do you see the government taking any steps to increase the minimum wage? Yeah, well, at this point, the, both, the, both opposition parties, the one on the left and the one on the right, have joined this call for raising the minimum wage. The, the ruling party, the PRI, Peña Nieto, uh, the president's party, has not yet sort of gone out, gotten in front, and taken an official stance. I think in part, the, it's a political issue. The, the opposition parties have used this as a way to distract attention from some of the big energy reforms and other economic reforms of the government and are trying to set it up as, a, as a, an election year. Next year is a congressional election year uh, issue so that they can uh, sort of regain some of the initiative from the party. But I, I think actually in the long run, all three parties are going to have to get on board and support this. It's just a, a no-brainer both politically and economically. Well, what, what kind of boost do you think the minimum wage is likely to receive? And what kind of timeline could this be following? Yeah, well, the, the same UN commission that's, uh, you know, it was mentioned in the report that supported a minimum wage hike also suggests that it's best to do these things gradually over time so that you don't have a big shock to inflation, uh, so that you don't have an impact on employment. And doing so, you can reduce inequality and, uh, and increase the purchasing power of the, the least advantaged in society. So I think you know, that would be the smart thing to do, would be to set it up as a multi-year effort to, to slowly but steadily increase the minimum wage and make sure that that's actually happening faster than the pace of inflation. Well, you know, Christopher, some people say that uh, one of the problems in Mexico is the informal economy which has a lot of wages off the books, and that 60% of workers don't actually have recordable or taxable wages. So how does this play in to the whole case of raising the minimum wage? Yeah, of course, it just means that you know, have less than, you know, less than half of your workers that, that will really have any serious impact on. So regardless of how much you raise an official minimum wage, if someone's not in the formal sector, if they're working off the books, there's no guarantee that they'll receive that benefit. And, and of course, the poorer workers are the ones that tend to be working in the informal sector. So you know, the fact that Mexico has such a large informal sector really means that it, as a government, doesn't have the same economic tools in its toolkit that another government with less, in, uh, less informal workers would have. So it, it's a big challenge for the government. And of course, the, there's sort of a whole different set of political t tools that are needed to increase formality, bring people into the formal sector uh, but that's got to be a part of the, of the picture as well. Well, Christopher, one of the other challenges that you mentioned is part of the appeal of Mexico's economy is the cheap labor. So if the minimum wage is increased, wouldn't that force multinationals to outsource manufacturing to cheap labor pools outside of Mexico and thereby have an adverse effect on the overall economy? I think that's a, you know, it's something that needs to be looked at and it's certainly a point of concern for policymakers, for business people in Mexico. But if you make the comparison of Mexico's minimum wage, and really Mexico's minimum wage isn't paid to most manufacturing workers in the country. They make quite a bit more than that already. Uh, but there's just mm. so much space to raise the minimum wage to still put it on par with other countries that I don't see a major negative impact. And the, the reality is, is that other countries that are Mexico's competitors, like China, have seen their manufacturing wages rise quite a bit faster than Mexico's. That's been one of the, the things that we've seen is that, you know, whereas Mexico had much higher manufacturing wages several years ago, they're now on par with China's wages, which are rising still much faster than Mexico's. So you don't see that as having an adverse effect. Well, President Enrique Peña Nieto is saying that he does want to boost the economy. Is this going to be a way that he can achieve this objective by having a federally regulated increase to the minimum wage? 
I think in the end it would be a way to boost the economy. I mean, the, the more important reforms that, that will really have a longer term, more positive impact on the economy are reforms to increase productivity. Of course, that's the much better way to increase wages, is to increase productivity, have workers actually be producing more and be getting paid more as a result of that. Nonetheless, because Mexico is so far out of line with its peers in Latin America and around the world, an increase in minimum wage would also increase wages for some, a small percentage, but some poorer Mexicans. And they will go out and spend that money. Of course, poorer people spend a larger percentage of their income than, than more wealthy people. So it would have a stimulative effect on the economy, although probably a modest one. All right. The debate continues, not just in Mexico, elsewhere around the globe, and as we mentioned earlier, here in the US. Thank you so much for your insight, Christopher Wilson, Senior Associate with the Wilson Center.